Oi oi, my name is Toad, and this week I have something a little bit more special planned. I have acquired a copy of First Edition Relic, and this week I want to paint up the first six character busts in a mild Blanchitsu style, with no metallic paints. Before I start, I won't be referring to any specific brands of paint, instead just the colour, as I want this to be accessible to everyone as possible. I also primed each of the busts black before I started with a rattle can, however you can prime them any way you like. I then put a black base coat over the primer in order to unify the colour. To begin with, I'll be starting with the poster boy, the big blue ultramarine. I took some white paint and did an all-over coat of white. I overbrushed this as I wanted to leave some shadow in some of the recesses. I then went over any of the parts of the armour that would be blue with a purple base coat, as this will tint the armour above ever so slightly. I did two thin coats of this in order to get the colour as perfect as possible. I then took my warm blue and mixed it roughly 50-50 with a black thinned it slightly with some water, and put two thin layers over the purple. I also figured out that putting the bust on a handle was likely the best way to avoid getting covered in paint. I may have used a paintbrush with yellow stuff stuck on the tip, as I don't have access to any blue tack, but that's unrelated. Following that, I placed a pure layer of my warm blue over the areas I wanted my midtones to be on the armour. Again, two thin coats of this before then mixing some white into the blue, roughly 75% blue to 25% white, and placing this just in the very brightest points of the armour. I then began glazing this from the mid-tones into the shadow, by mixing a very thin layer of blue, wicking off any excess moisture if need be, on a paper towel, and placing it over the edges of the mid-tone layer where they touch the recess colour. I then mixed a bit more of the shadow colour into the glaze, thinning when necessary and placing it over the previous layer, once that prior layer had dried fully. I then repeated this process of blending the mid-tone into the highlights. In order to bring out all the layers together fully, I made a very thin wash out of the mid-tone blue and put this over all of the armour panels to finish off the armour, before then moving on to the next bit. I then wanted to begin work on the gold trim and accoutrement, so I base coated all of the yellow areas in a warm brown colour. I then took a warm yellow, mixed it roughly 8 parts yellow to 1 part brown and 1 part red. This was used as the brightest point. I placed this over the areas I had painted brown. On the trim I placed it in small spots of the brown saw showing. On the aquila I just put it over the tips of the details, and I placed 3 horizontal lines on the backpack. I then followed the same steps with the blue armour and glazed it down into the brown, before then finishing off the gold by putting a tall dot of pure yellow on the brightest areas of the gold. For the shoulder details and skulls on the bust, I wanted to go for a bone white, so I painted them with a base coat of cold brown. I then mixed a small amount of white into the brown, uh, roughly 75% brown to 25% white, and placed it over the top. I put a bit more white in, roughly 50-50, before then putting that towards the top while the previous layer was still wet. I then put a layer of pure white on the very top of the area and blended them together uh, as they were still wet with my paintbrush to mix the layers together slightly in order to create a smooth transition. I did the same wet blending technique on the small vents of the power pack and the vents on the helmet of the marine with a grey and black in order to create a slightly silver look. To finish it off I did the lenses, this was done by placing a red in the lens and then glazing up to a pure orange at the bottom corner of the lens. And with that I was done. Secondly, I want to do the rogue trader. I started with this red coat and for this I base coated all of the coat in a warm brown. I then placed highlights of the red and followed the same steps as before with the blue armour. In how I glazed down to the brown that I had placed as the base coat. I then mixed in some orange to the red and glazed it over the top of the model in order to bring the brightness of the coat up a tad. I then lastly used a brown wash over the red in order to blend the colours together. I then went in and did all the gold details the same way as the Space Marines gold details, starting with a brown base coat and working up to a bright yellow. For the face, I wanted to go for a more rugged pale skin tone, similar to the artwork. So I started with an orangey brown base coat on the skin elements. I put this on in two thin coats, I then mixed a tan into the brown and laid it up to be a pure tan. 
I then mixed a small amount of white into the tan and did one final layer over the very highlights of the face. For the hair I did an overbrush of a dark grey and then I did a second overcoat of a slightly lighter grey. I then put a black wash over the top in order to get some more subtle variation and that was the hair done. For the normal eye, I carefully put some white paint into the eye socket thing. <laughs> Before then putting a dot of black where I wanted the iris to be, I'd recommend practicing your brush control on a bust if you want to learn how to paint the eyes more effectively. For the bionic eye, I followed the exact same steps as the Space Marines events with the grey bionic casing. But for the green that was present in the art, I put a dot of dark green on the main segment. Then I mixed a bit of yellow into it and added a layer, repeating this till I had a bright green dot left in the centre. Lastly was the gem on their lapel. I did this by painting it red, and then I glazed a small amount of dark green in the top left, just to look like a slight shadow. I then took some of my orange and glazed it over the bottom till it was pure orange in a small patch. I finished that off by putting a white dot in the top left and the bottom right of the gem. Next, I started work on the Stormtrooper Sergeant. I wanted to do this black armour first, so I took a light grey and I made this by mixing my black and white together and placed that as a thick edge highlight over the edges of the armour, as it's rather angular, before then wet blending it into the rest of the black with some dark grey paint in order to create a bright highlight that still reads as black on the rest of the armour. I then moved on to the red, and for this I followed the exact same steps as the Road Trader's coat, just starting off with a black base coat instead of a brown one. I then came in with some pure white and freehanded an IV squad marking on their right shoulder, as the art shows. I glazed some dark grey over the top in order to blend it in with the rest of the armour. I then moved on to the leather. This was done by putting a base coat of the warm brown down over all of the leather parts, such as the backpack and the straps. Then, once it had dried, I did a few scratchy layers deliberately by trying to make my brush strokes look like scratches in the material, by gradually mixing in more of my orangey brown into the warm brown. I finished it off by glazing some of the original warm brown over the leather. Next, I wanted to do the bed roll on their back, and this was done really simply by overbrushing the black with my tan. I then mixed some white into my tan and overbrushed this over the top of my previous layer once it had dried, and I then lastly put a green wash over the top of this in order to create a well, more green fabric-y look. Then I finish off the model by doing a more extreme version of the armour over the grenades and gas mask details uh, that were on the bust. This was done by starting with a pure white instead of a light grey in order to create a slightly non-metallic metal look, as opposed to just a shiny black armour. Before then following the same steps as the Rogue Trader's bionic eye for the lenses on the mask. Following this, I felt it out to do the Sitter of Battle. I started by doing the same steps on the armour as the Stormtrooper Sergeant, with the highlight being blended into the black. Then, I followed the same steps as the Space Marine for the yellow, however, in order to create a harsher look, I did it over a pure black instead of a brown. Then, moving on to the Sororitas face, I did this by starting off with a tan, and then, following the similar steps to the Rogue Trader for the skin, I highlighted up to a nearly pure white, in order to match with the art on the character sheet. I then glazed some red into the cheeks and around the face, to bring some colour back in. But, for the hair and white accoutrement of the armour, I painted it pure white and then simply added a light grey wash over the top in order to add some variation. Then, for the eyes, I simply did the same as the Rogue Trader's normal eye. Moving on to the Calidus Assassin, I wanted to go a bit more away from the art instead of painting yet another grey armoured bust. I wanted to go for a muted green on their armour. I did this by starting with the dark green that we've been using and base coating all of the undersuit. I then mixed it roughly 25% dark white to dark green and did a layer over the entire armour. It will look quite bright, but we'll knock it down in a bit. Then, once that was dry, I did a smaller pass with a 50-50 mix of white to dark green. I then proceeded to use glazing, as we have been doing, in order to bring all of the layers together. I then hit the layers with a black contrast paint in order to knock down the brightness. The rest of the bust was really simple. I painted the ponytail by painting it red and then glazing orange onto the topmost parts for braids. The lenses were done in the same way as the Rogue Trader's brooch gem. And I did the leather the exact same way as the Stormtroopers. And the skull on her chest was also painted the same way as the bone white on the Space Marine. And lastly for this week's video, I have the Tech Priest. For this I started with the robes. These were painted red, the same way as the Rogue Trader. Apart from a brown wash, I didn't do that till later. The artwork made it seem as though the shoulder pads and the main body armour were almost made of stone, so I went with that. 
For this grey, I painted the pauldron to dark grey mixed with a small bit of tan, then highlighted up to a light grey. Again, made sure I had a small amount of tan present in it, as this made it seem more earthy and less mechanical. I followed the same steps as the Stormtrooper's grenades for a slightly non-metallic metal look on the mask and the pipes of the priest. I then painted the cog trim in white. The artwork shows the priest as having the same detail on the hood of the boat, so I freehanded that onto there as well. I followed the same steps as on the marine for the gold on the power generator on the priest, before then painting half of the face and the other half of the cog black, and the rest white, on the mechanical symbol, like so. I then painted the lenses green, like the rest of the green lenses, and gave the armour on the torso a green wash, just the chest armour, not the shoulder pads, and then lastly I gave the whole bust a brown wash. I finished them all off with a matte varnish to protect them during gaming, and I was left with these. Hopefully this shows that you can do a decent paint job quickly, that works as a tabletop standard. I do still have the other six busts from the game, as well as the two expansions, so I'll be painting up the other six next week, then I'll be having a two week break to do some kit bashing videos again, before returning with the expansions. I mostly do kit bash videos, so once I am done I'll be returning back to my Black Templar army building series. I hope you have a wonderful week, and I'll see you next Friday. Ta-ra!